So that was linear polarization. It has uses in both your LCD screens and also your polarizing sunglasses. Speaking of glasses, um, another polarizing state that we often have to talk about is the circular polarization. Um, it's actually the type of polarization of lights that we use in 3D movies and in your 3D glasses we have circular polarizers. And once we get through this you can think about why we choose to use circular polarization instead of the simpler linear polarization. Circular polarization is a little harder to visualize so we'll have to go through it a little slower. Um, please bear with me. First of all, how does it look like? The good contributors to Wikipedia has contributed this lovely GIF. As you can see, as the EM wave propagates forward, it looks like that the electric field is spinning around in a circle within that plane that you see there. So in terms of describing it convention-wise, this one we'll be calling a left-handed circularly polarized. How is that? Because if you have the propagation direction out of the page, you see that this thing is spinning clockwise and that's if you have your th and that if you have your thumb in the direction of the propagation, you get the finger curling in the right way. So this is what we call left circular polarized polarized um, technically we should state from the source because some people do it the other way but most people go this way. Same case we can have right circular polarized by it going the other way. So always point your thumb towards the propagation direction and then see which way your finger curls. Because the electric field of the circular polarized light keeps moving it's actually easier to understand it as the sum of two linearly polarized lights. Very special ones, in fact, that are equal in magnitude and they are perpendicular to each other. And then after we see that, we have to understand the use of retarder, but we'll get into that in a second. So let's first deal with the simplest case where you have your linear polarized light. adding up with another linear polarized light, but that's perpendicular to it. So these are both E, it's not your E and Bs here. So that has one E, that has one E, and if we look at it head on, what we would see is we get that and that going on. And just for the sake of argument, we'll call those both sides positive. To see what's going on, let's draw out what each of the two components are doing at different points along the propagation path. Well, here we have it going up, then at this point we have it going down, this point we have it going up, down, up, down, and this over here we have it going to the right, then the left, then the right, then the left, then the right, then the left. So what you have then is actually as you work out the resultant it's a linear polarized light in 45 degrees. Now this isn't quite circular polarization yet, but if we combine the use of retarders, this would eventually become circularly polarized light. So it is important to talk about what retarder does. Uh, we won't be so much concerned on how they're made, but it, we're just going to focus on its effect. We're going to draw this kind of like a block for now. Um, it's usually a piece of crystal. And what's special about them is it's got a fast and slow axis. So say it's got a slow axis along here. And what that does is any electromagnetic wave that travels along that axis goes slower than traveling along the other axis. So as a way to illustrate that, we have this guy coming through and nothing happens to this guy and it becomes and stays like that. Along the slow axis, however, it somehow comes comes out slower. So instead of starting from this spot, it starts, you can visualize it as starting back here, and then it comes out. As a result, the two waves become offset. And depending on the thickness, it gets offset by different amounts. 
So let's first look at the effect of a half wave retarder. So to look at this effect, we start with, once again, our normal wave, like this, but it's easier to visualize it head on. So this guy we have over here, and it's over there. So we have linear polarized light in that direction. Now halfway of retarding it, this guy doesn't change. So we can still draw the head-on wave to look like this. But if it's slowed down by half, what we've effectively done is we flip it around. Because I guess we'll quickly draw that over here. If we move this back by half a cycle, 180 degrees, what we would get is we would get this wave instead. So it'll, instead of going up, it's going to go down, being negative. And down on negative on the horizontal is like that. So what we've done is using the half wave plate, we've changed the orientation of the linear polarized light. Instead of 45 to the right, it's now 45 degrees to the left. So that's the effect of a half wave retarder. If we go in between and do a 90 degree or quarter wave retarder, that's when we get circularly polarized light. Let's illustrate that too. So for the quarter wave, we can also draw a thing, slow axis, call it 9 degrees, quarter wave retarder. Initially, we once again start with, for instance, um, both of them going positive at the same time giving us 45 degrees that way. But if one of them is now changed by a quarter wave, so say this is a cosine function we're starting with, we're gonna get something that looks more like that. Now, of course, in 3D, it's kind of hard to draw and visualize. Let's just look at it head on for a series of points. So the normal one is gonna have a normal cosine function, we'll pick points that are more or less like these. And then for the other one, it's a cosine curve that's been shifted back 9 degrees, so it kind of looks like that. So it'll start out with 0, but heading towards a negative. It's often helpful to draw that in to know which 0 we're at. And then it gets a little more negative, and then it gets really negative at that point, and it gets shorter and start to head towards the other way. So you can see what the component's doing. The component is going here, 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 here. So you can see how the resultant is doing this circular motion. And that's exactly what the circular polarized wave is composed of. It's composed of two linearly polarized light that's 90 degrees with respect to each other, same magnitude, but offset in time by this 90 degrees. So in this case, this time we're getting the right circular, and we can also get the left circular by, instead of retarding the horizontal, we can retard the vertical, or we can advance the horizontal, either way. To sum up, how you would create the circularly polarized light is use a combination of a linear polarizer and a quarter wave retarder that's oriented in the correct direction with respect to the linear polarizer. So the slow axis has to line up 45 degrees from the actual linear polarizer. Because what that does is here we have randomly polarized light making two components. And then because we're slowing this guy down, so let's work out what the resulting light would be. Let's start with Usually it's important to start with a certain coordinate system, so we say positive and positive. We draw the one case where we have the cosine curve, like that. And the other one, the other component we consider separately, it started out as a regular cosine curve, but it got shifted back, so it looks like that. And so we know it's heading slightly negative, negative is to the left in our case, so we got this. And as time goes on, you know that the next one's gonna kinda look more like that. 
and so you know it's heading in the counterclockwise direction. This is an important skill to have in order to work out how the circular polarized light interact with other circular polarizers to see how we can get the effects that we want. Given that we have circular polarized light, say in this case right circular, how is it going to interact with the different polarizers that we have right now, the different optical components? Well, if it's going through a linear polarizer, as the actual electric field spins around, um, what's going to happen is still going to let through just that component along the axis of the linear polarizer through, but then the size of that component is going to change as time as it spins around. So what you actually get is basically linear polarized light, but then the actual amplitude gets smaller and bigger. Now of course this happens at 10 to the 15 hertz, which is the frequency of the light. So you're not going to see it blinking that quickly. All you see is that it gets a little dimmer. So it's not that's not very exciting. But what happens if we put another circular polarizer, another quarter wave retarder in front of that? So here we have this case, and for nor for our right circular wave, we have this guy going straight up, and the other component is going there. Coming out of the quarter wave retarder, what do we have? We have same thing, this one goes straight up. The other component, of course, it was like this, but it got shifted back even more by another 9 degrees. So you're actually at the most negative at that point. So you actually f end up flipping. You recollect your linear polarization, but it's in the other direction, which kind of makes sense. Think back to the half wave retarder example doing a quarter wave retarding and another quarter wave retarding that's adding up to be a half wave. And so if your direction ends up perpendicular to the polarizer, you're going to get nothing. So you get 0% out. And that's determined by the orientation of the polarizer with respect to the slow axis of the retarder. Conversely, for the same light, if we orient the linear polarizer the other way, this still gives you that, and you end up getting the light coming through. Funny enough though, if we have left polarized light, in which case the situation starts out like that, if we pass it through our 90 degrees retarder, through the same two linear polarizer, here we get this doesn't get affected. This, where were we? We were at going positive, so it looks like that. And then we retard at 9 degrees, so that's the most positive. And so the component looks like that. We have this, and nothing for the other one. So maybe already you can start to see how we can use these as. 3D glasses because if we sent sorry right circular polarized light through both of these lenses, this guy gets the light. If we send left, so that's the right circular, if we send the left circular, it goes through the other one. So as long as we can work out how the quarter wave retarder do to either components of the lights, we can figure out if it becomes circular polarized or linearly polarized and vice versa and so we can figure out what the ultimate end results would be. Keep in, keeping in mind that um, it's not so much now the orientation of the linear polarizer absolutely but it's related to how relative to the slow axis of the retarder the linear polarizer is oriented that would change circular polarized light to linear polarized light or vice versa.